Hello, welcome to my step-by-step -step tutorial on how I made this two-part mold. Let's get started. So today my model is this cute little glass bear that I found at a local antique shop. I thought it would be a great model to replicate because it's small in size and it's not too complicated. Uh, although it does have some undercuts, so it will require a two-part mold. Now to get started on a two-part mold, you have to decide where your parting line is going to be, um, where your first side and your second side of your mold will be, basically. Uh, on this model, it's pretty easy to determine because I can already see a line in the model, so I'm just going to follow that natural line. So to begin, I'm using some Sculptex sulfur-free clay. It's important to use sulfur-free clay because most silicones will be inhibited by anything containing sulfur. So what I'm doing to begin is embedding my model in this clay. I'm going to build up to that uh, partition line that I had showed you in the beginning. And I'm just going to slowly add pieces. Of course, now I have the video running at hyperspeed because I actually work very slowly and we would be here for hours. Now what you're going to see me do is add a little bit more clay to build out the sides of my walls here. And that's because you need enough room to make your keys, which I'll be doing next. So I'm just building it out so I have a nice even border all around my model. And here it is all smoothed out. I've carefully cleaned that parting line that goes around the model. I've cleaned up the clay. Everything is good to go for the next step. So to make my keys, I am going to use this bolt. Um, it's a nice handy item I already have around the house. I'm just going to be pressing it into the clay to make an indentation. The purpose of making keys in your two-part mold is so that your side one and side two lock in together. Um, it helps them register perfectly so that you have a nice seamless casting. Because I have a small model, I don't need to add many keys. I'm going to put them around as, as many as I can, um, being careful not to disturb the clay around the model. Now I've ran out of room to make additional keys with my bolt, so I'm just using a pencil eraser to just add a couple more keys. So in this next step, I'm cleaning up my model. This is an easy step to forget, but you know, in the process of embedding it in clay, it may have some residue, some fingerprints. Um, you just wanna clean that up with a little bit of alcohol. Now we are ready to begin to build our mold box. Here I'm carefully laying out my mold box walls. I want to make sure that they're cut to the right size and I have a plan in place of how I'm going to glue them down. Um, for this project, I'm using quarter inch foam core board. I just had some extra laying around the house. Um, it's the same stuff that you buy from any craft store. To begin gluing them down, I'm using a hot glue gun. As I move around the model, gluing my walls in place, I want to make sure that I'm avoiding any voids between the clay and those walls. You will see that I begin adding pieces of clay in any gaps just to fill that void, prevent any silicone from leaking down. The next step here is to really 
reinforce all your seams with more hot glue. So I'm going around the bottoms, the edges, sealing up any little nooks and crannies. The silicone will leak out of even the tiniest of pinholes, so um, go around a couple times if you have to. Now I'm going to be measuring my mold box. I have the dimensions of my model and my mold box so I can determine how much silicone I will need to dispense. I like to use the online calculator found on the SmoothOn website where I can plug in the dimensions and it tells me the total amount that I need. The material that I'm using for this project is Mold Start 16 Fast. Now I'm going to show you the lid here in a second because it is very important to pre-mix and stir each the side A and B before you get started. Now I'm ready to move on to uh, dispensing my silicone and mixing it up. So conveniently the amount that I need will fill this plastic cup to the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the part A into the cup, let it fill up to the top of the rim. I should also note the mix ratio on the Mold Star 16 Fast is 1A to 1B by volume. This means that I do not need a scale to measure it out. Um, it's super easy to just do the 1A to 1B visually in equal parts. Okay, now that I have those dispensed, I am ready to mix. At this point, I am setting a clock because I'm working with the FAST formula. Once the part B goes into the part A, your clock is ticking. The pot life is six minutes. This is the working time I have before the silicone will start to solidify. So I'm keeping an eye on the clock. I'm double mixing my material into a new container, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, uh, mixing until it becomes a consistent color. At this point, I'm ready to pour. Here I am pouring the silicone into the lowest part of my mold box. I'm allowing the silicone to seek its own level up and around my model. I do this very slowly, but I have it sped up just for the sake of demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to allow the silicone to fully cure, which on the Mold Star 16 Fast is a full 30 minutes. Once your material is cured, you can begin to take apart your mold box. I'm just gently prying the walls off of the silicone and the clay, I'm trying not to disturb the clay, and I'll just remove them all. I'm going to quickly clean off the board. The next step would be to remove the clay. The next step, of course, would be to be putting our mold walls up again. Um, again, I'm also cleaning my model of any clay residue that may have been left behind, and I'm just using a little isopropyl alcohol to do this. Now I'm ready to assemble my mold box around the first half of my silicone. Okay, that's looking great. The next step is to coat your mold rubber with release spray. This is a very important step. I'm using the Ease Release 200. You're also going to want to do this in a well ventilated area. Now I've got my second batch of silicone already mixed up and I'm ready to pour the second side of my mold. I'm going to follow the same process by pouring into the lowest part of the mold box and allowing the silicone to seek its own level. 
I also want to note that one of the reasons I like the Mold Star line is that it does not require vacuum degassing. It's a low viscosity, which means that it flows pretty easily um, and it's not likely to entrap bubbles or air into your silicone. Now that I've filled up the second side, I'm going to wait that 30 minute cure time again. Now that the silicone has cured, I can pop off those mold box walls. Great, now we're done and we just have to peel apart the two sides of our mold. Um, there's a little bit of overlapping silicone, but if you apply some gentle pressure, it will peel apart easily. And that's it, I can pop my model out of the mold. You can see perfect detail is replicated on both sides of the mold. Um, I can just assemble each side, locks in together perfectly, and I'm ready to move on to castings. For this project, I'll be using Smoothcast 326 and So Strong Colorant. As always, I'm going to thoroughly premix the material by shaking the part A and B thoroughly. Next I'm going to prepare my mold. I'm taking a few pieces of rigid foam core and rubber banding them to either side of the mold. This will give it even pressure all around and prevent it from leaking. At this point I'm ready to dispense my material. Smoothcast 326 can be mixed by measuring one part A to one part B by volume. These equal parts uh, by volume make it super easy to dispense and uh, measure accurately. For my first casting, I'm going to be using the So Strong Red colorant. Uh, I just show a little bit there on my stick. A little bit goes a long way. I'm stirring it into the part B to achieve the color I want before I mix them together. All right, we are now ready to mix. I'm going to pour the part A into a new clean container, making sure to scrape the sides and bottom and get as much of that material out of the cup as possible. And then I will repeat the process with the part B and begin mixing them together. Oh, but before I do that, I'm just going to grab my phone and set a timer. I like to set a timer when working with materials so I can keep track of the pot life. The pot life on the Smoothcast 326 is 7 to 9 minutes. Uh, this is the working time you have before the material starts to set up. And you can see here I've mixed the material and then I double mixed it by pouring it into a second clean container. Now I'm going to pour it into my mold and I'm pouring just a little bit at a time to uh, coat some of the undercuts since I did not add any vents. And then I'm going to fill the rest of my mold up and pour the excess in a cup on the side. And uh, thumbs up because I finished within my pot life. An hour later I can see the material in my cup is cured so I know that I'm safe to demold my casting. The mold easily splits apart and I can pull out my first casting and it was a success. Thank you for watching my process on how to make a two part mold in castings and I hope it helps you in your own projects going forward. Good luck!